Brooklyn Beckham has revealed just how close he is to Mum Victoria by unveiling his latest and very personal tattoo. The 18-year-old debuted his rather large mum tattoo on his arm and while some have criticised the decision, VB is overjoyed. The proud mum of four took to Instagram captioning, Big tattoo, kisses from NYC at Brooklyn Beckham, hashtag love you. The tattoo is a heart-shaped design which features flowers and a ribbon running through the centre presenting the word mum. And if you thought this was his first family tattoo, you are sorely mistaken. Last week, Brooklyn shared a simple 1975 ink job on his hand, which is the year his father was born. Well, isn't that something? Now we just need to wait for Cruz, Romeo and Harper's mentions. If you're planning on heading to the seaside, don't forget to pack sun cream, sangria and a previous lover because X on the Beach is returning to our screens next month. This new batch of lads and lasses should be quaking in their designer flip-flops as their dream holiday could turn into a living nightmare due to several reports of angry ex-lovers washing ashore. There's a reet familiar face in the ex-villa as Geordie Shaw worldie Marnie Simpson leaves the teen behind to find love in Spain. This comes after her painful split from ex-single AF boyfi Casey Johnson. My fingers are getting tired here, gang. MTV Weather exclusively caught up with the cast of Series 8 ahead of the dating show from Hell's Return next month. This is obviously when I take a lucky someone into the penthouse and give him the best night of his life. So make sure you set your video recorder to Tuesday the 20th of March at 10pm because X on the Beach is back across the entire country. We're still doing the weather. You might want to pop a little t-shirt on because the shade you've noticed due to Joanna Lumley's snub from Jennifer Lawrence may be set to lift today as Jen explains her diss was just an inside joke. And also no one wants to see you naked. At the BAFTAs, Joanna described Jen as the hottest actress on the planet, to which Jen replied, that was a bit much. Oh! Thanks for coming down for that, guys. Jennifer cleared it up today, saying, backstage, Joanna and I were about to go out. So I'm like, just adjective after adjective, tall, beautiful, just say that I'm this and that. She went on and said all these nice things to me. So when I got onto the podium, I said that was a bit much, like after I'd just spent backstage telling her to be nice to me. Ah, that's better. I always prefer a joke after it's been brutally dissected in front of me. Staying in LA, you may have noticed some noise pollution around the Staples Center over the weekend as the weather got increasingly fergy. The singer performed an interesting rendition of the Star Spangled Banner before the NBA All-Star Game. It was so interesting, in fact, that several celebrities and players and social media sites burst out laughing. It's even currently the top most trending video on YouTube. So today she's decided to address it with the following statement. I've always been honored and proud to perform the national anthem and last night I wanted to try something special for the NBA. I'm a risk taker artistically and clearly this rendition didn't strike the intended tone. I agree. Since the birth of Kylie Jenner's daughter Stormy Webster, the world has gone all cuckoo over her. Mother Kylie posted a pic holding her newborn's hand, which broke the internet, gaining over 17 million likes. That's more than the population of Cambodia. I know. I'm full of useful knowledge, me. We are yet to see a glimpse of the little lass's face, so instead it seems as though we've all decided to amuse ourselves until then. A Russian nail salon chain, Now Sunny, drew info from Stormy's first Instagram pic for one of their most recent tutorials. Brace yourselves as this is where it starts to get a little bit weird. A time-lapse video shows a three-dimensional likeness of Stormy's barely formed hand, clutching Kylie's well-manicured thumbnail being assembled tiny finger by tiny finger. Slightly unsettling that this tutorial has been watched by 1.7 million of you in the last few days, which means over a million of you could be walking around with tiny fingers attached to your finger. Hmm, a little bit gross if you ask me. Her Majesty herself, the Queen, made an impromptu visit to London Fashion Week. What? I hear you ask. I know. Allow me to explain. Good old Queenie headed to 180 The Strand, the popular home for all fashionistas, and explored designer showroom spaces before heading to the Richard Quinn show to do fro with Anna Wintour. In layman's terms, she sat in the front row next to Fashion's Elite, giving us face, no doubt. Probs not, but one can drink. Of course, being the Queen, you don't just sit on any old chair. You'll arrive to a standing ovation from the crowd, with a Philippe Stark chair waiting for you, topped with a plush blue cushion. That beats Ikea's £2.50 the all cactus collection any day. Once the show was over, Her Majesty took to the podium to hand Richard Quinn his award for new talent. Ah, the Queen takes London Fashion Week next. She'll be shaking her tush at the Brit Awards. It was the Brits Wednesday night, the second biggest night of the British music calendar after Elton John's Christmas party. As usual, there were winners, mainly Stormzy, Dua Lipa and Esty Heim video bombing Liam Payne. There were also losers, mainly the Tories and Theresa May when Stormzy called them out in his performance for their lack of action after Grenfell. On the red carpet, there was the usual glitz and glamour, but also a lot of focus on women after the recent Time's Up and Me Too movements. This is what Jessie Ware had to say about that. Dua 
Johnny Depp is like the most nominated. It's amazing that Dua's up for them and it's so brilliant that she's breaking records but I'm glad that Paloma Faith said something and then they added a few more uh, females to the lineup of the live. So it shouldn't be even a thing that we talk about. But it is and yeah. it is a conversation we should have it but it's unfortunately a conversation that we still have to have. Here's to more women on these stages, more women winning awards, and more women taking over the world. Thank you so much. She's got a point. It shouldn't be a conversation that we have to have. Sometimes you want to take a break from talking about it all the time. So on a lighter note, here's Steph Don being very timely and well behaved for the Brits. Yeah, I know, it's late. I'm actually on time. Last year I was so late, I didn't even see the red carpet. You're <laughs> early, in fact. I know, really early. <laughs> I'm super excited. I want to see Sam Smith. You know, Sam wasn't, you know. Steph and Sam, you know, maybe. <laughs> Is he a bit of you then? <laughs> yeah. Is that up your street? Sam. Yeah, Sam, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And from one heartfelt British crooner to the next, George Ezra gave us news about something we can't wait to hear that isn't music his podcast. So next week is London Grammar. Craig David's yet to come out. We've got Royal Blood. I'm sitting down with Elton. Sir Elton John. Sir Elton John, yeah, so I need to get ready for wow. that one. He's a chatty one though. That would really? be good, yeah. Okay, amazing. That's all from the red carpet, but make sure you check out our roundup of all the best bits from the Brits. Wow, great rhyme. Yet I'm the only person to be writing that headline today. Emma Watson has donated one million to the Justice and Equality Fund, which aims to help and prevent sexual harassment in the workplace. As well as her more than generous donation, Emma was joined by another 200 actresses, including Emma Thompson, Jodie Whittaker, and Naomi Harris, to sign the letter of support for the Time's Up movement. She told The Observer, it's easy to dismiss harassment and abuse as being caused by one or two really, really bad men, but the UK statistics point to a much bigger and more structural problem. This issue is systemic, and as opposed to individual, one or events. Speaking of actresses, making a stand, Jennifer Lawrence is taking a year off from acting to pursue political activism. Jennifer has announced she will be working with Represent Us, a charity to help promote voting amongst young people. J-Law, who has starred in multiple films such as The Hunger Games, X-Men and the recent Red Sparrow, is seen as an acting icon to many and has always been vocal about her passion to create a positive change. In her interview with Entertainment News, she explained, I'm going to take the next year off, I'm going to be working with this organisation as a part of Represent Us, trying to get young people engage politically on a local level. It doesn't have anything to do with partisan politics. It's just anti-corruption and stuff trying to pass state by state laws that can help prevent corruption, fix our democracy.